Alright, I don't think I've made a video on Jaden McDaniels yet, which is we're gonna do what we're gonna do today. Language. English. I got it. So Jaden McDaniels proves, once again, for Timberwolves fans that have gone through this a million times with a bunch of pretty good players. Development is not linear, right? Player comes in, looks pretty good. Next season, doesn't improve like it's a video game. You don't just go up overall and go, alright. No, it takes time. It takes a lot. Of, it's a process for players to develop, and we're seeing that with Jaden McDaniels this season. It's been disappointing, relative to expectations anyway. For the 25th overall pick, right? 25th overall pick, 2020, after a promising, promising rookie season as a 20-year-old. He's 21. I often argue that expectations for Jaden were set too high. You've probably heard me say that before. If not, yeah, you probably haven't, actually. But anyways, he just turned 21. You know, he's just, he just now is able to drink alcohol he just got that legally and he's expected to be this team's timberwolves two-way player the timberwolves two-way number three you know the starter playing the three position two-way player good on both sides starting for a playoff hopeful team at his age with his experience with his draft slot that's just not realistic like the value the timberwolves got for the 25th pick is great but right now, it's looking at Jaden McDaniels and being like, wow, he's having a bad year. He was the 25th pick. He's 21. Let's give this guy time. It's it's. Is it more Jaden's fault or the Timberwolves' fault that he is now being slotted in as like the starter, a true starter on this team that's like, we're going to make the playoffs? Like, that. that's a bit unfair. No, that's, that's my argument. Anyways, before we keep going, uh, hit the like button. Leave a comment. What do you think about Jaden so far? You still have hope in him? His value has certainly decreased. But hey, that's how things work. Uh, subscribe. Nearly 700. Thank you all. Very much. I mean it. Alright. But anyways, it's not only the fans, right, that hype him up. Fans do. I do. I hype him up a lot. I love Jaden. I think he's good. But media hyped the hell out of McDaniels. Because, first of all, what else were they going to talk about last season, right? We had Edwards, sure. But besides that, it was another horrible losing season. Cat and D'Lo weren't playing. And McDaniels looked good. Breakout player. So he got all the content, all the talk, and that was fair. That was fair. But, yeah. Even Chris Finch, offseason, Britt Robson did a sit-down talk with new coach Chris Finch. And kind of said, what do you think of Jaden McDaniels? And Chris Finch brought up the name Scotty Pippen. That's really setting your sights high, isn't it? Like, he wasn't straight up saying McDaniels is Scotty Pippen, but he was saying, same type, put in those two, same sentence. That's a high expectation. That's more our fault, the Wolves' fault, than, you know, obviously you want Jaden to play better, and he will, but he's 21, and we expected the world. Anyways, <clears throat> let's, so how's he doing, at least in his draft class, right? That's what I wanted to look up. Among players in this class, remember McDaniel's 25th overall pick, McDaniel's this season is 20th in points per game, 22nd in three-point percentage, 9th in rebounds, so top 10 among his class in rebounds, but 24th in assists. He just does not, he's not a good passer, straight up. But defensively, 9th in steals, 9th in blocks, 8th in defensive rating. Uh, but he is 1st in fouls per game. He commits a lot of fouls. He has a terrible whistle, like the refs hate Jade McDaniels, but still 1st in fouls, 3.9, that's a lot. 15th in offensive rating, and again, the rating stats don't mean too much for individuals this season, yet anyway. And 30th in usage percentage among all those drafted. He's tw drafted 25th, 30th in usage percentage. So the Wolves really don't use him when he's on the court. And I think maybe they should have been more. But obviously, the shooting numbers, they're, they're not very good. <laughs> Effective field goal percentage, 44%. True shooting percentage, 45%. At the rim, 54%. Mid-range, 39%. And three-point percentage, 26%. With free throws at just 60%, similar to what he was last year. Now, for comparisons real quick, just bear with me for a minute. His true shooting is 45% this year. It was 56% last year, so about 11% higher. At the rim, 54% this year. It was 62% last year. Uh, Mid-range, it, it is 39% this year. It was 43% last year. So, improvement there. And three-point percentage, this one is huge. 26% last year, or, sorry. 26% this year from three. Last year, he was 37%, so 11-point improvement from 3 and from true shooting. Overall, he was just better. Assist percentage, 5% this year, 6% last year, pretty much the same. 
a bit higher in turnover percentage at 15% compared to 11% last year. But yeah, offensively, he has been worse this year by quite a wide margin than he was last year when he really broke out. Jaden getting going. It wouldn't unlock this offense per se. Like, it just wouldn't. He's not that impactful. That's up to the big three. Ant, Cat, D'Lo. If, if the offense is going to be unlocked, it's going to be because of them. But Jaden getting going would help a ton. If he can effectively cut, we saw a bit of it last game. I don't think I have the clip, but we saw a bit of it last game. Effectively cutting Jaden and hitting some corner threes at a league average rate. That's really going to help. We've seen bits and pieces of that, but more is needed. If he's hitting shots, defenses actually have to account for him. And that opens up things for Cat, D'Lo, and Ant. It just does. But he's still getting 25 minutes per game, despite the major offensive inefficiencies that I've pointed out. I mean, so is you know, Beasley and others that can't score. And they don't provide nearly as much as McDaniels does on the defensive end. He's really good on defense. Just for a bit of perspective, the Wolves have a 108 defensive rating when Jaden McDaniels is not on the floor. And when Jaden McDaniels is on the floor, the Wolves have a 100 defensive rating. So, 8 points better, despite his terrible offense. The website Dunks and Threes comes out with a percentile for everyone, offensive and defensive. McDaniels is 14th percentile on offense. He was 33rd last year, so he's gone down 20 there about... But he's in the 91st percentile on defense. 91st. So the top 10 percentile. Last year he was at 73. Dunks and Threes, this website that I'm using to, with the percentiles, has him as a top 30 defender in the NBA. That's pretty good. Obviously. Any other Wolves in there? Let me actually... Okogi is a 98th percentile defender this year. Uh, Dunks and Threes has him as the 6th best defender in the league. So the Wolves have two guys top 30 at least as I continue to look through here. Yep, so two guys top 30. And then Jared Vanderbilt is the 89th percentile. So those three together are good. They're really good defenders. And they've shown that this year. All three of them also. They're just nothing on offense. Nothing at all so far. But they play a lot because they can do one thing really well. And that's kind of the story of this Wolves offense. They can all do one thing really well. And for these three players, it's defense. But we're still talking about Jaden. I've gotten a few people saying they don't believe the defense hype doesn't always show up in stats with Jaden. It's more about what's he doing? Is it off ball, on ball stuff? Like what's, is he actually good? Or is it just numbers that say he might be in media that says he is? I mean, that's fine. It's not a, I don't know. Everyone thinks Jaden's good at defense, but hey, whatever. I don't really have a ton of clips to back it up either, but there is one. Tyler Metcalf tweeted it out after the Bucks game against the Wolves. So I want to pull that up and just kind of run through it. It's on Twitter, so it's a bit blurry, but I'll do my best here. Alright, Jaden McDaniels. So, it's really blurry at the beginning, but anyways, let's get to Giannis has the ball driving at the beginning. It's really, again, sorry for the quality. But McDaniels is at the elbow over here, opposite side D'Lo, and he basically shuts down this whole possession. We'll go through it. By the Alright, kick to the corner, Vando, by the way, gets down there, excellent closeout. And from here on out, McDaniels is the primary defender, I think, on about three guys. The guy in the low post... The guy in the corner and the guy at the top of the key. Ready? So driving, Vanderbilt again forces the pass here to Giannis, right? Towns is now on Giannis. McDaniels is the lone defender pretty much for these three guys. Giannis would love to dump it off into the low block for an easy dunk. McDaniels denies that pass. Giannis is basically looking for a kick out now. Goes up top, good on D'Lo for covering this one, but now there should be one wide open guy, right? Because McDaniels has to choose who to cover while Cat stays on Giannis. But uh, McDaniels play. denies up top, kind of gets in his way, forces a pass to the low block. And then on this pass, again, he defends the corner excellently, tipping the ball, getting a steal. Well, not getting a steal. But see, that doesn't show up as a stat. That's just a tip out of bounds. It goes on the dunks and threes saying because he did well, but it doesn't go as a steal. I hope that, like, made any sense at all. I tried my best. If not, I apologize. But yeah. He's really good on defense. His awareness is excellent. Like, yeah, he's just really good. If you just watch Jaden McDaniels all game, like tonight against the Spurs, when McDaniels is playing defense, just watch him specifically. And if you don't think he's good, hopefully that will change your mind, unless he just has a terrible game. Anyways, McDaniels will always have the great defense, I think. But his offense is going to improve enough to justify 25 minutes per game, right? I think so. I 
I think it's going to get back to at least where it was last year eventually. Like, that's just who McDaniels is. League average on offense, nothing special, but good enough. Recently, I was asked in a post-game live stream. Those are, you can attend those after every game, starting to, I mean, including tonight. I was asked, should Jaden get more shots to, like, you know, kind of spread the ball around? And I, my answer right now, I think, is is no. I think he's getting a fair amount of shots. We'll look at who the leaders are, but not that it's, he's not getting a bad amount, right? All right, so here we are, Wolves, sorted by field goal attempts. Number one, Anthony Edwards, 20.8. Should we take some of those away to give to Jaden? I don't think so. D'Angelo Russell, 16.7. He's going to get his shots. You can argue to take some away, but it's just not going to happen. Cat at 16.1. I would argue needs like four more shots a game, so that's not going to Jaden. If you wanted to find some, it'd be take a few shots away from Bees, but I'd give those to Towns before Jaden. Beverly averages 6.9 shots a game, but those... To me, Beverly's shots are all very opportunistic. He doesn't really force anything, so I'm good with those. Nas Reed taking 6.8. Main guy off the bench, it seems cool with that i guess aside from bees but read read the guy that i like taking the shots off the bench 6.8 keep those and jade mcdaniel's seventh at 5.9 shots a game before a huge drop off to vando prince noel at about three point you know mcdaniel's the last guy above 3.9 and he's at 5.9 i like where he's at seventh on the team in shots behind the first six guys i would also choose to get those shots so no i don't think mcdaniel should get more shots i think he should just make more of the ones he does take anyways let me know what you think of mcdaniels watch him tonight or the next game saturday but yeah should be fun i'll be live right after the game as always so see you then come stop in leave a comment or leave a comment beforehand anyways peace see you later